Over Trail Renderer. We will start with the basic ball scene and then move on to more complicated stuff. Let's start by adding the Trail Renderer component to our object. The first thing we'll need to do is change the material to default line. Now if we press play, we'll have a basic trail that follow around the player, but we still need to make it look more like a trail. Let's start by changing the trail width to 0.2. To change width through time, right click on the end of the graph, select add key and pull it all the way down. Move the handle to change the curve, click anywhere on the curve to make another key point to change it the way you see fit. Right click and delete to delete the key. As you can see, our trail shrink in size, but it's way too long. To fix this we will change the time variable to 1 and now when we start to play our trail seems better. Now let's change the color. In the gradient editor we have two options, the higher keys and lower keys. We will use the colors to simply change the trail color, we can do it for one color or with the gradient. We can also add more keys by clicking on the bottom and delete the keys by clicking on them and pressing delete. We will use the top keys to change the alpha of the trail and make it transparent. And again, we can make it full color or gradient. If we set the mode to fix, it will change colors at once and with the blend, it will make it gradient. Let's set up all the things and see how it looks. Now that looks more like it. I will give you a few seconds to soak it in and not because I'm too lazy to cut this part. To save all the changes we made on play mode, we'll right click on the component, select copy component, exit play mode, add the component again, using paste component as new. Path 2, duplication, trail of an object. I went ahead and made a new scene with a simple bullet and a trail that fades out. The first thing we'll need to do is create a new material. And let's call it trail material. Let's change the shader type to particle standard unit. And enter the albedo, the sprite of the bullet. Let's change the rendering mode to fade so we'll be able to use transparency. Now go to the sprite and make sure the warp mode set to repeat, so we can repeat the object few times in our trail. Now we can go back to our object and change the trail material to our new material. If you'll play the scene, we'll see that the sprite is stretching instead of repeating. To fix this, we will change the texture mode to tile. And now it starts to look a bit better, but we still need to fix it. To fix this, let's go back to our material. Here we'll need to change our tiling and offset to make everything look just right. After some trial and error, I found out that 0.6 is the best thing for me. But try it out yourself and see what works for you. I did the same thing with the offset and found out it's minus 0.5. You can check it out yourself and put what fits you. If we don't want to change the offset but we still want the sprite to be behind our object, we can go back to our player and change the trail order in layer to minus 1. And now to save everything, we will right click on the component, press copy component, exit play mode, and then right click on the component and paste component values. Part 3, Trail Renderer in 3D. Trail in 3D is pretty much the same as 2D, but we still have a bit more things to add. For this scene, we have a sword with basic animation. Let's start by selecting the game object and making a child to hold the trail component. We add the child so we can position the trail at the right place, unlike the things we did so far where we wanted the trail to be on the object. Let's start with the basics. We added a material, changed the transform of the trail object, now let's see how it looks on the animation. Nice, now let's tweak a few things like the color, the trail width and the trail time. Now let's do a few things that we didn't do before. Let's start with changing the sprite to spatial mapping inclusion. This will make our trail the same as the material of the game object and I think it just looks cool. Just note that it doesn't have transparency. Let's lower the trail time to create a motion blur effect. Remember that the trail is always looking towards the camera. And that's it, we got a basic trail in 3D. Part 4, Extras. These are some of the things that you might not know and can be very helpful in a lot of situations. First is auto destruct. When you check out auto destruct, when the trail catch the object, you mean the trail end and the object doesn't move for the time of seconds, for example 1, the game object will be destroyed. Emission. Emission is basically telling if you can see the trail or not, and this can be very helpful by using with a script to enable and disable the trail without enabling and disabling its component. 
I have no idea why I want to do this, but if you find any situation where it's helpful, please put them in the comments. For example, I made a script when you press a key and it's enabled and disables the emission on the trail component. This is the basic script, if you want it, the link is in the description below. And that's all the basic things you need to know about the trail renderer component. Make sure to subscribe, join the Discord channel and show your cool trails in your projects. Bye!